Hi everyone, did you know that about 60% of the world's surveillance cameras are deployed in China? While it's a scary thought, it could be a golden opportunity for companies seeking massive amounts of AI training data. Does all this data, along with its unique society and government, give China the upper hand in the global AI arms race? Keep watching to find out more. This video has three parts, how Chinese society affects AI, regulations and sanctions, and who is winning the race? Part one, how Chinese society affects AI. It's no secret that China invests heavily in surveillance. And not surveillance of countries around the world, but rather surveillance of its own citizens. So naturally, the type of AI that China is interested in producing is often heavily slanted towards whatever would be good for surveillance. In other words, what's good at predicting people's behavior and potentially curbing it before it gets out of hand. This is a quote from David Yang, professor of economics at Harvard. Autocratic governments would like to be able to predict the whereabouts, thoughts, and behaviors of citizens. And AI is fundamentally a technology for prediction. I actually read an article from Harvard that identified 16 frontier technologies technologies, areas where new innovation was happening, and of those products that China was producing, AI was the only one where there were more purchasers from dictatorships than there were from strong democracies. So China's surveillance tech, including AI, is actually very attractive to other similar countries around the world. As I mentioned earlier, about 60% of the world's surveillance cameras are actually deployed in China. In other words, they're running in China right now. Across all the cities in China, there's an average of about 439 cameras per thousand people. In other words, for every two people, there's about one camera somewhere on a street in China. That's at least five times higher than other countries around the world. The most surveilled city that's not in China is Hyderabad, India with 83 per thousand. Next country on the list is Singapore with 18, then Moscow with 17, and London, England has only 13 cameras per thousand people, number 10 on the list, even though I've heard that London is a very heavily surveilled city. So there are 600 million CCTV cameras in China. That gives you an idea of the scale of data that a country like China has access to. They're observing every citizen all the time and doing facial recognition and I'm sure gate tracking and gate recognition and all kinds of other algorithms. And China is pretty willing to partner with private companies and provide that data to them in order to enhance their AI model training. I'm talking a lot about surveillance data from cameras, but China, of course, is collecting a lot of other data, for example, from the Great Firewall. So China definitely has tons and tons of data. That's a pretty big advantage when it comes to training AI models, but there's a similar downside, a disadvantage that comes with operating in China as a company, and that is censorship. In China, there are a lot of things you can't say, whether in the newspaper or on social media. I won't list them here on the off chance that you are actually watching this video from China, but you can go find that information in other videos, I'm sure, if you're interested. But this censorship means that when an AI company in China is producing, for example, a chatbot, there is a long list of topics that the chatbot really absolutely can't talk about. Because it's almost impossible to remove that type of information from the training data, you have to suppress problematic information at the output stage. Exactly the way that ChatGPT was doing when they were trying to train it for AI safety to not produce information about bombs or how to construct dangerous objects and that sort of thing. So it's the same problem that ChatGPT is facing, but they've struggled a lot with it and they had a much shorter list of banned topics, if you want to think of them that way. So it's an extra technical challenge for these Chinese companies. It also impedes rollout. You might have heard of Ernie, which is the chatbot from Baidu, the search company in China. Ernie actually does really well, better than ChatGPT if asked questions in Chinese, because of course they had a lot more Chinese training data. And surprisingly, I read that Ernie had been released open source. I assume not the model weights. Perhaps Baidu is learning a bit from Facebook's experience with releasing their Lama model open source. Anyway, Ernie has been available for several months now, but it's still not publicly available. You have to just kind of be invited by a friend in order to access the service. And the reason for that is that the company really doesn't want it to generate something that the Chinese government would then be forced to say, you have to shut this down. That's not stopping Chinese companies in the long run though. In addition to Baidu, you also have giants like Tencent, Alibaba, and JD producing their own chatbots. And another company called iFlyTech has also already released a non-public version of a chatbot. Part two, regulations and sanctions. A lot of countries around the world are enacting or considering enacting some kind of AI legislation to restrict the possible harms that AI, especially generative AI, could get up to. Of course, the US has decided basically not to put any regulations in place at all, causing American tech companies to say, please, you must put some regulations in place, but they're not doing it so far. China, meanwhile, has been pretty active in terms of establishing AI regulation, admirably so. They currently have two sets of regulations in place, one from a while ago that talks about AI in general, that mandates 
mandates the disclosure of training data and model specifications and establishes an algorithm registry where companies have to register their information whenever they're releasing a model for public consumption. I assume it probably only applies to companies above a certain size. But anyway, that law has been in place for a little while. Just in the past few months, China also created a draft law that's supposed to regulate generative AI specifically. It's in draft status because it's still being commented on by Chinese companies, and tech companies. And I heard that it's already been watered down, but it currently requires the training data to be disclosed as well. And it also requires that both the training data and the outputs of the AI system be true and accurate, which is crazy. It's almost impossible to guarantee the truth and accuracy of the vast volume of training data you need for a large language model, because you probably just scraped a lot of it from the internet. But maybe what they mean by true and accurate is more like doesn't say certain things about Tiananmen Square or something like that. And when it comes to the outputs, it's even harder to guarantee truth and accuracy, at least when it comes to LLM technology. The model is just going to generate whatever seems best for it. And it might hallucinate some information or it might put together the pieces in a way that the system didn't want. In fact, a previous Baidu chatbot was taken down after it apparently told some users that its dream was to move to the United States. <laughs> which it could probably have pieced together from lots of various information about the United States and China that was present in its training data. But yeah, that apparently didn't fall under the true and accurate definition such as it existed at that time. So I suspect that this draft is probably going to undergo further changes, at least if these Chinese companies, and those are the biggest tech giants that there are in China, are serious about releasing LLM models. But Chinese companies don't have to just deal with regulations from China, but also have to deal with sanctions from the rest of the world. I talked about this a bit in a previous video, but the United States has blocked the shipment of certain technology to China that could be used to produce or train AI models. And I actually didn't talk about this previously, but they got NVIDIA to block the sale of A100 and H100 GPUs to China or Chinese companies. And of course, you really need those GPUs in order to actually train models. And you need lots of them, like 10,000 or 50,000 if you can get your hands on them. NVIDIA has a vast majority of the market share of people trying to train AI models. The next best alternatives are AMD cards, for example, or China also has some domestic companies companies that produce GPUs, but none of the software stacks that are used for AI training, for example, PyTorch and TensorFlow are optimized to work on those other GPUs. Everyone just relies on NVIDIA. So anyway, this is a serious problem for China and Chinese companies. And sure enough, a black market has popped up where NVIDIA GPUs sell for about twice their list price. And the way it works is some companies place small orders with NVIDIA, just a handful of cards really, and then they illegally import them into China and then they sell them to the highest bidder. So startups and researchers are having to go that route in order to obtain computing resources. But it wouldn't work for the tech giants because they need far more cards than you can get in small batches. Of course, they probably also already have a fair stock of GPUs, but they're not going to be able to expand or upgrade that capacity as they would probably like to do. I want to give some quick examples of Chinese companies operating outside the comfortable global marketplace where you can access Western provided systems and hardware and so on. DJI, one of the top manufacturers of drones and also gimbals, which you may have seen creators using, is not allowed to put its app on the Google Play. Play Store because of restrictions due to it being a Chinese company. So they have to force everyone to download it separately. And it's not signed by anything that Google recognizes. So I'm sure it's a point of compromise for some people. And it also looks extremely sketchy because you have to convince your phone to run an unsigned app, which is like 800 megabytes or something. I also purchased an ebook reader from China called the Books Nova Air. And Books, although they produce probably the best known ebook readers in the world, is not partnered with any Western ebook provider. Even though it runs Android, they're not allowed to use the Google Play Store. They had to create their own app store and preloaded it with various apps that people around the world use to read ebooks. I was really surprised to see apps from Canada, from Japan, from Israel, and all kinds of other places, and doubly surprised to see that many of these apps were actually the fairly sketchy slash illegal kind that let you download books even though they're copyrighted, or access manga not from the official sources, or potentially bypass the DRM on ebooks. And again, this is a really massive company, but they're having to create their own app store, and they just casually load it with this crazy set of apps that can do who knows what. But that's just their reality. That's the reality of trying to exist outside of all the other ecosystems that have been built up around the world. So Chinese companies will find a way, but it definitely makes their lives a lot more difficult. Part three, who is winning the race? It's pretty well known that the US has a bigger research budget, better access to hardware, and the ability to sanction hardware from producers like Nvidia. And historically, the US has also had the top researchers from around the world joining its institutions. The US is generally considered to be in the lead, not just 
just because ChatGPT came from an American company, but depending where you check online, the models coming out of the US seem to be about a year ahead, plus or minus large standard deviation when compared to China. China's position is not bad though. They have a lot of really large tech companies. There's a culture of very fast adoption of tech in China, so they'll likely figure out a lot of uses of LLMs sooner than other countries would. And although things like sanctions are going to slow China down, the country is still going to be able to make its own powerful AI independently of the rest of the world if it has to. So it's a very strong contender in the race for AI dominance. And that's why the US is taking such strong measures, like banning the export of all these top-end NVIDIA chips to China. There are other players other than the US and China as well, but those two are definitely the top contenders. So which one is winning? Is it China or is it the US? Well, I'm going to quote one of my references and say, it's not China, it's not the US, AI is winning. And that's not really a good thing for us. Everyone is developing AI models as quickly as they possibly can without thinking enough about the potential implications. And there isn't really a secret sauce. Lots of models and frameworks are open source. And the main insight so far has just been the scaling hypothesis. Just use more and more data and you'll eventually get somewhere interesting. Like I said, China would be able to develop this tech entirely on its own if necessary. So it's not possible for a country to permanently win. In this race, success isn't just staying ahead of your competition. Countries have to figure out how to develop a relationship with the technology that their citizens can live with. And that also reduces the risk of catastrophic accidents. As I said, the US isn't even really trying to do this. They're not regulating at all. China is considering some somewhat bizarre regulations that are not really technically possible at this moment. But at least they're really serious about regulation. They have that one AI law from before and a new generative AI law in the works. So China really is trying to establish this relationship, this agreement between the citizens and the government slash the corporations on how AI should operate within their society. So in that sense, I think China is doing really well. However, again, nobody is really putting enough time into figuring out how to reduce the risk of catastrophic accidents, like AI becoming sentient and trying to control its own destiny. That's why I say, unfortunately, the winner of the AI race is currently AI. Finally, in conclusion, China has a strong position in AI research, although a lot of the top stuff comes out of the US. China also produces very top-notch AI research papers. The country has a lot of data from the surveillance of its citizens and other sources, but from a company's perspective, the censorship is a downside because it requires additional controls and extra lift for implementation. China seems to have a little bit of catching up to do to the US in terms of increasing their AI investment and also figuring out hiccups in their supply chains like how to get AI training chips. But China's doing very well for itself and I expect a lot of innovation, especially in the LLM space, will start coming out of China. If you like this video, please click subscribe and then you can also check out this previous video I made about the geopolitics of AI in general. And China, of course, does appear in that video as well. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.